Hello, I'm Dr. Lyle Fairley, Senior Pathologist at the Queensland Institute of Forensic Medicine. On this episode of The Science of Harrow, we have to call it that. Yes, we do. On this episode of The Science of Harrow, mummies, not that kind, that's better. When we think of mummies, we often think of zombie pharaohs stumbling out of their tombs and bumping into everything. Mm -hmm. A laughable Hollywood myth. 3,000 years in a sarcophagus and the concomitant muscular atrophy would leave one completely immobile. What is mummification, I hear you say? Well, allow me to flesh it out. <laughs> Mummification is the process whereby a deceased person's skin and organs are desiccated, dried out, preserving their body for a very, very long time. When we die, all the bacteria that a healthy living body keeps in check through our immune system suddenly go on a wild rampage of feasting, pillaging, breaking down our organs and blood in the process of decomposition but remove the organs and liquid, and the body is preserved, shriveled, but still a recognizable human body. Which brings us to today's side note. Brought to you by Sangha Tenzin, a 15th century Buddhist monk who mummified himself through a process known as Sokashin Buts, practiced by hundreds of Buddhist ascetics who would live off a diet of pine needles and seeds, thereby removing all body fat, then slowly reducing their liquid intake, dehydrating to such an extent that they were already mummified at the point of death. For most of us, human intervention is necessary post-mortem to ensure mummification, but if the conditions are right and you die in a place where bacteria struggle to grow, such as very cold or very dry climate, then the process of spontaneous mummification can occur. And this is just what everybody's favourite... Uh, really? Favourite? Just please read the script. Uh, all right. Everybody's second favourite, forensic pathologist, Dr Daniel Harrow, encountered when he examined the mummified remains of a woman found in an enclosed space underneath the house 20 years after her death. He certainly has a type. <clears throat> right, a type of case he likes to solve. And but how did she come to be mummified? Allow me to demonstrate. What is this? It's a... I thought that you were uh, going Let to... me guess. Breastfeeding mummies? The title said mummies. Oh, I just... Was... <laughs> Never mind. The bacteria that break a body down need water to live, like all living things. And what makes up water? Hydrogen and, no prizes for guessing, oxygen. No air means no water. No water means no bacteria and no decomposition. So, in a tightly enclosed space where there's a very small amount of air, bacteria are going to have a hard time growing, grinding the process of decomposition to a halt. And after 20 years, voila, you've got yourself a mummy. We'll talk about this. Mm. Oh, it's interesting. Cut. <laughs> 